thoughts on the game overall, Coach? Uh, my thoughts on the game are, I was talking to uh, to the Murray State coach, and I think we sort of set offensive basketball back about 10 years. Uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody could hit a shot. Uh, the effort was there. Effort, effort was not, and the intensity was not an issue. It was the fact that we just couldn't hit a shot. I, uh, for our team, like I'm looking here in the first half, we're one for 11 from the three. And uh, thank goodness, you know, they were 0 for 11. That's the only thing that really saved us. Uh, I thought our defense was really good from the, oh, the middle of the fourth quarter through the, uh, through the overtime. So we hit, uh, we hit some crucial free throws, but we also could have hit some other free throws that we missed that would have put the game out of reach. Like at the end, if we hit that one, it's a four-point game. But guys, I'm just telling you, uh, I'm just, I, I'm, thank the Lord that we survived on, on a day like this. And uh, what you do, there's no such thing as a, there's no wins a bad win in basketball, not in athletics. You just, uh, you're thankful for the win and you survive and you try to advance. Coach, you guys were down four late in the fourth quarter and then you're up five early in overtime and both those swings kind of got washed away and then you had to find a way to win, you know, in, in, in the last minute. Is that something that you guys have done well this year, just kind of overcoming those shifts? I think we've done a pretty good job of overcoming adversity throughout the year. We've, uh, we've been in a lot of close games. Uh, I was doing uh, an uh, interview yesterday with, uh, with Roy with, from Central Texas uh, Sports, and uh, we, we really we, we execute well when the game's tied at the end, and I'm proud of that. But that swing you're talking about, we had like a five-point lead, and then they come back, I think, and tied the game. But we had two critical plays there. We had an offensive foul and we had a turnover. And, that, and we should have, you have to understand at that time, I was, try, I was trying to explain to them, you know, time is more important than score there. You need to make sure you run some time off the clock. Even if you were to do a shot clock violation, uh, you run some time off the clock and then that limits their opportunities to score the rest of the game. Coach, both your teams came in playing really well defense. How much of the lack of offense was but the defense is how much of it was jitters? Uh, I think some was jitters, but I do think this. I think Murray State played outstanding defense, and I don't think we adjusted real well throughout the game. Uh, somebody being up in our space all the time, uh, you know, they survive on that, on, on def team defense, and they survive on the, on the dribble drive offense. And they're really hard to guard. They, Co they really are. Coach, you had two players, uh, Benita Diada, uh, and Holmes that came in off the bench and played some some big minutes for you. I know Diada had uh, 13 points and uh, I think close to 13 re uh, rebounds. What can you say about those two players uh, uh, and, and how they contributed well, to these? Well, I, I told I told Benta at halftime, and I'll just be point blank with you. I said, Benta, if we're going to have a chance to win this game, you have to perform some for us in the paint. You have to. Now the other change with Aaliyah Holmes coming in and playing extended minutes in the second half, and she hasn't done that in a while, is because if you look the way they were guarding us, anytime we throw the ball to the high post, they were guarding Naya Williams. Well, they just back off to the middle of the paint and play five on four. Well, we had to have someone out on the floor that they had to respect as a shooter. And she definitely did that. She had a couple of threes in the second half. Got She played pretty good defense. Now, I'm on Leah all the time about that. And, uh, and then she hit some critical free throws down the stretch. But that was the reason for that sub. We probably just sacrificed a little bit of size for an offensive presence. Coach, uh, Miano was on the ground and got a timeout for you with 47 seconds left in overtime. And then I don't think it was about, about three or four seconds there. And after that timeout that uh, Sania had hit the three point. Mm -hmm. Was that a design play for her to take that even though she hadn't scored yet in the game? It's a, it is a design play that has if you recall this, we ran that same set in the first half and we circled and we got the ball down there and missed the layup. Mm -hmm. So this time when we got in that set, they covered the layup up and they did not cover the pop out for the shot. Mm -hmm. And those both are options off of that same play. And uh, so, you know, is there a, a story to that? I guess so, maybe you, you miss a layup for a three. <laughs> well, and the fact that, were you concerned at all that she hadn't, scored yet in the no, game. No, let me tell you exactly, Chad, what mm -hmm. I said. I've called, you might have noticed, I called uh, Wooten over there and I called Sunny over there and I hollered the same thing out to Mimi. Guys, you have to trust your work and you have to trust your shot. 
even though it's not going well today because those guys have led us all year long and they are three really good shooting guards and uh, you know I, I thought with uh, Nene jumping up and nailing that three that's the prettiest shot as you could see for all game and uh, that's the way she's been shooting the basketball you know so y'all seen it uh, you've seen her, her perform before but uh, they did a really good job today of taking away uh, our three-point shot uh, we tried to get inside they had great help and uh, it's nothing more guys than uh, yes we had a bad shooting night they had a good shoot a bad shooting night but I think both teams play really good defense I really do I think both teams are to be commended for that and like George said, I, I think it's a combination with some jitters, and I, but I also think it was good team defense on both, both squads. Coach, how excited is this team? This, this, this McKinnon Community College team that uh, with all the struggles of last year, here they are in this championship tournament, now with a win in this championship tournament. How excited is that team well, over there? Well, they were really room? excited in the dressing room. And, and, and guys, anytime you can win on a night that you didn't play your best, that's an exciting time. And uh, like I told them, I said, all you guys that played, you need to walk right back there in the restroom. You need to flush it three times. And there goes all the offense from today. And tomorrow's a brand new day offensively. Speaking of tomorrow, Trinity Valley, you said you scrimmaged them but didn't play them in the regular season. Um, anything to gain from that scrimmage way back? In well, we we know how they play. They play outstanding. They are a sophomore-laden team. Mm -hmm. They are uh, the three seed in this tournament for a reason. They're one of the renowned teams in uh, as far as national championships go in the NJCAA. And uh, we're going to have to come out and just play really, really good to hold our own against them. But uh, I do, they're going to play, they're really athletic and bigger. That's going to be what you're going to see tomorrow. You're going to see a Trinity Valley team that's going to play that kind of defense, only they're bigger and athletic, more athletic. But also, you know, we're, we, will, we will compete. And for us to win, we'll have to hit some shots. But right now, my main concern is I want these guys to enjoy this win. It's their first time to be at the national tournament in 39 years, and I want them to enjoy this win. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Can you get to me?